Hey, welcome to another episode of Open Mic. We're so excited that you are listening or watching today. Today's a special episode where we have some of our worship staff on the podcast with us. So I have Jake, Kyle, and Piper. How are you guys doing today? Hey. So good. good. Very good. So good. And they are talking about like, is worship something that is just for a worship service? Um, and you guys see them all the time in front of people, leading worship. Um, so I'm interested to get into that and talk about it a little bit. But you guys do such a good job on a consistent basis. But I want to ask you guys, what are some of your biggest worship fails? Because people don't see them often. You guys don't screw up very often. <laughs> what are some of your biggest worship fails? There's some good ones, for sure. Absolutely. Can we know about them? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who wants, probably, to go f- who wants to go first? Most of them are probably online. Somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. Shout out to okay. the live stream. One of the... One of my worst ones, I don't, I don't think many people saw it, but I felt it, that's <laughs> for sure. It was right after the worship set got, like, we, it concluded, and we were done, and I was moving my pedal board back to get out of uh, Pastor Eddie's way, and I went to pick it up, but I also stepped on the cable of the board I was picking up, and I fell back down. <laughs> really loudly and I was like wearing boots and I slammed my knees onto the ground and several people <laughs> afterward who were like somewhat close were like you all right <laughs> <laughs> it was bad that was one that was one of my that it, it hurt for me yeah not only was it embarrassing it just hurt my knees so yeah <laughs> didn't feel that, good yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think mine uh was this last semester during young adults actually um I was singing forever and that song is just it's pretty high. It's up there. And uh, with full confidence, I sang and cracked and sounded like the chicken dog toy when you <laughs> squeak it. Um, <laughs> that is what came out of me. The worship chicken? So, yes. <laughs> I was nice. The worship, the worship chicken. squeezy chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and it was pretty terrible. And uh, I have a friend that shows the video to people anytime mm. it's brought up. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was at uh, a worship night. I think it was a th- our last worship night. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> But it was a very <laughs> worshipful, worshipful moment, um, and I was singing, and we were singing "Rest in You," I think. And then after, and I was, I said, "You've given me no reason to trust you." <laughs> and no then, reason to trust you. You've given me no reason to trust you. Absolutely no reason. And then I quick, I, a couple seconds went by in silence. I have my eyes closed, and then I realized what I said, and I was like. Not to trust you in song, <laughs> and corrected myself, and that moment was over, and we moved on, and it was. I, I think we also have video of that one. We definitely have somewhere. it somewhere yep. on our phones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. That's yeah. good. It's good to know that you guys are human as well, because oh, yeah. I make a lot of mistakes, and uh, it's good to know that you guys do <laughs> as well. Oh, but uh, we're excited to have you guys on today because we wanted to ask you guys about the thing that you guys help us to do so often in church, and that's worship. And kind of the the title of today's podcast would be, is worship something that is strictly for worship services? Is worship something that is only for a worship service? So before we get into like the question, what is worship like as the Bible would define it? And and, uh, can you give us that definition, Kyle? Sure, yeah. Um, I think worship... It's we too often think of it as like a time in our services, um, a, a, of like music, of song, uh, like this is our worship time. This is these are our worship songs, um, but that's not what worship is. Um, really, worship is a a full life response um, to who God is and what He's done. Um, so, worship is a lifestyle. It's it's the way you live. Um, each and every moment. Uh, it's knowing who God is and then responding to who he is um, in worship, living a life. And as we read scripture, you know, you see the things that um, God wants us to do and how he wants us to act, and it's living by um, those ways. Uh, so so the, the first question that I have um, is the title. Is it just for a service? And you, you kind of already answered that to a certain extent, no, it's not just for worship. Why does it culminate in our worship services that way, and how does it culminate away from our worship services? It's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, how does it culminate 
in our service. How does it culminate like yeah. like together in a service? Yeah. And then how does it like like you said, it's a lifestyle. It's a response to who God is. Right. So it's clearly not just something that's for a service only. Yes. So what yeah. does that look like? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think as as we were kind of talking about beforehand, talking about this idea of worship, um, it's not like what we do in church is corporate worship. It's together. Um, but that's not the only um, time we should be worshiping. Um, there's there's personal worship too, um, and those really it's it's cyclical. Those those feed into one another. Um, as um, you worship uh, in your own personal time, that like fills you up, and then we get to come together as the church, um, and then have that overflow of this time that we should have already had with the Lord, and then that further encourages us to go back by ourselves and to have a more personal time uh, of worship with the Lord. Um, so I don't know if that totally answers your yeah. question, but yeah, I think it's, they, they both work together and you have to have both. You can't so what, have one. so what do each of those look like? Yeah. Hmm. What about you guys? What is like your personal time of worship yeah, look like? For my personal time of worship, um, you know, I mean, obviously I think, uh, reading scripture, getting alone behind closed doors, um, and diving into scripture is one of the biggest things for me. Um, and obviously, you know, when we think of worship, we obviously think of singing, but it doesn't have to be singing. But, um, in my personal time of worship, I do find myself not, not every time I have a quiet time, but I do like to grab my guitar and just sing some worship songs, um, just, just by myself. Um, I find it sometimes hard, you know, being uh, one of the ones who lead songs here. Um, you know, sometimes you can get away from like that uh, actual worshipful moment for yourself. You know, you're kind of focused on actually leading people um, in moments. So I like to get away just by myself where I don't have to lead anyone. You know, it's just me. Um, I'm basically just leading myself and just singing these praises to God. Um, so. That's kind of my personal um, time of worship. Yeah. So, yeah. Piper, what about you? I was telling you guys earlier, um, one of my like favorite things is just to be alone in my car and not have any music going, just kind of like sitting in silence and audibly speaking, like having conversation with God. I, um, if I have it internally, I my mind just kind of like rambles and I will get very sidetracked <laughs> um, and I never stay like on topic or... I never, like, finish a thought. So to audibly, like, just have conversation, it probably looks weird to other people that I'm, like, driving by, but um, that is something that, like, I'll talk to him about what I read that morning or something earlier in the week and just getting, like, more confirmation, like, from him through that of what I was reading and then being able to come to church and share with someone, like, hey, this is what stuck out to me and what I was reading this week, and this is what I got from it. I don't know if you've ever read it or, like, got the same thing from it, um, but I th think that's just another example of how, like, your personal worship connects to corporate worship and coming together in that community and teaching or learning from one another and doing that. So We talk, uh, like, on the podcast and at Young Adults quite a bit about, like, spending time with Jesus alone. Would you guys say that that is different, like, a quiet time is different from a time of personal worship with God or is that in your mind is that kind of the same thing for me those are like the same thing okay like yeah. I, yeah. I think I would agree. like when like for me like my time of worship is is my quiet time where I can yeah. be alone um like I have two boys at, at, at the house and so like there's not like quiet moments a lot so I have to like they're your children you don't just have to yeah, yeah yeah they're yeah. not just two random boys <laughs> um <laughs> But they're there, and they're loud, you know? Like, yeah. the kids are loud and crazy. And so I have to, like, you know, wake up extra early or stay up later, like, to, to have that quiet time um, where, like, because, like we were saying, worship is not just song. It's, it's reading through the scriptures. Um, I like to read through scriptures and then pray through that passage. Um, I also like to, like, spend time just, just meditating on, on scriptures and... Uh, I heard uh, from the guy from the Bible Project. I don't remember his Mackie? name. Mackie? Yeah. 
Tim, Tim, Tim Mackey? Tim Mackey, yeah. He, he described um, meditation not in, like, the Eastern Buddhism way where th- they encourage you to, like, like, empty your mind and just, like, see if there's any revelation. That's not, that's not biblical Christian meditation. This type of meditation is filling your mind with Scripture. Mm-hmm. Uh, you fill your mind with who God is, with what he's done, um, and just you just sit in it and mm-hmm. dwell in it and see, you know, what the Holy Spirit brings to your mind, um, not by emptying it, but by filling it with the things that we know that are good. Um, so for me, that's like, that's worship. When you when you get to spend time with the Lord, doing what He's commanded you to do, and just sitting in His presence. So I, I you talked about like the cycle of like personal to corporate. Mm-hmm. You know what we know is like a church service, right. the, the worship portion of the message or of the service. Um, why, um, so I think there are some, like, maybe young adults that would argue, like, man, my time with God is good. Why do I need that corporate time with other people? What does that matter? If my time with God is good, why do I need a corporate time? Mm-hmm. I think uh, we push it a lot at High Street and in young adults, but coming together um, as, like, the body of Christ and just having that community, um, like I mentioned earlier like we get to learn from one another and like what works for you and spending time with the Lord like I might not have ever thought about that and that might work for me and I might learn a different way to like worship that I didn't think was worship or just hadn't thought about before Mm -hmm. um but also with community comes that like accountability I was reading some article I don't have any idea where it was from or what I was reading but um they were talking about being like the body of Christ and the difference in personal and corporate worship, but as believers, we are like um, baptized into the body of Christ, and you don't ever see a part of the body existing without the whole body. Mm -hmm. So like we as individuals cannot be the body of Christ if we are not surrounded by others that are the body of Christ. Yeah, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 11, it says, therefore encourage one another and build one another up. Um, and so I, that's like a huge part of corporate worship is we're together. Yeah. We're, we're doing this thing um, together. An- another verse that like we read with our team all the time is Psalm 34.3. It says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And so like we, we, we kind of like repeat that verse on the worship team. Like our goal is to magnify the Lord and to exalt his name, but it's also like we're doing this, and we're bringing our team, we're bringing our whole church, we're saying, hey, as we worship, come with us. Uh, As we exalt his name, let us do this together. Mm -hmm. Um, And so there's something very biblical about, um, like, worshiping together. And, And like we've been saying, it's not just songs, it's like any of our content that's like, that we're gonna put in a service, um, it's gonna be rooted in scripture. It's going to be built around the idea of pointing to Jesus and like recognizing him and knowing more about him. Um, So we we do that through song, like, you know, throughout scripture and encourages us to sing. But Colossians 3.16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So it's we're singing, we're teaching, we're admonishing, we're encouraging one another. Um, it's all of these things that are just built around the idea of knowing the Lord together. What um, I, I had to look up the reference, but it's John four twenty four, and you kind of mentioned it. Um, that says God is spirit, and His worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Mm-hmm. What what does that mean to you all? That that like we don't just like focus on the way that we feel? Because I think a lot of times worship can be about a feeling or can be centered around a feeling. What are the dangers of worship being centered around a feeling? And then why why and how do you focus it back on truth? I think basing it off a feeling is pretty dangerous because you're not going to have that feeling every time. And if you're thinking that that feeling is God moving, then if you don't feel that again, then you're like, all right, where, where are you at, God? Like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think we, like, as 
in the church world and in the worship world, um, your time of worship or like singing can be based um, off of an experience. Mm -hmm. We kind of have that mindset. Um, But ultimately, whatever worship it is, whether it be personal or corporate or any kind, it needs to be rooted in scripture and the truth in that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's one thing we do a good job of um, here in like our planning sets is like making sure that one song at least one song is like telling the story of Jesus and what he did on the cross right. um but yeah yeah we're always gonna point back to yeah the the life death burial and resurrection of Christ like we're uh we want to be centered on you know the salvation that he he offers us but yeah I I think we do have to it, it is in spirit and in truth um but it, I think we can't just rely on feelings for for our worship, like mm-hmm. Piper was saying. Like, like sometimes you're going to be going through something really hard, and you don't feel it that day. But that mm-hmm. doesn't mean we shouldn't worship. Mm-hmm. Um, God is still worthy of our worship, even when I don't feel great. Yeah. Like, so it has to be both and, yeah. Yeah, so what can you guys explain, because I think this is important for people, whether it is whether they're thinking about worship as a corporate or a personal space, like what do you guys, and you kind of explained it, but like what does truth and spirit have to do with like, why is that our reflection point? Like why does that, why is truth something that's like centering us back on what's most important? Um I guess I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is like if it's feeling or what we see as the spirit, those can be a little hard to navigate and guide. Mm-hmm. Where the truth can be a little bit more of like a definite, like I know that this truth is there. What right. do you do for like you, you mentioned it in like choosing songs that like focus back on the truth? Yeah, I mean, I think we can always when we're like looking for a song that needs, you know, obviously has truth in it, um, we can always run to songs that are clearly um, talking about just the gospel of Jesus's um, death, burial, and resurrection, um, and what he's done for us. And I think that is so powerful. Like, I don't think you can come up with or muster up any lyrics on your own that are more profound Mm -hmm. or more powerful Mm -hmm. than scripture itself. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if that yeah. kind of... Yeah, because I think right. sometimes yeah. we can equate... So I feel like my question may have been a little confusing. That We can equate, like, worship with only an experience. Right. But, like, regardless of the type of week you're having, regardless of the headspace that you're in. And I think I think in corporate that people see it, the way that, mm-hmm. that you all put sets together. Mm-hmm. But, like, in personal, that's not always the way that we approach yeah. our time of worship right. with him, of, like, okay, I'm going to center this around him, mm-hmm. his truth, and what I know to be true about him and trust that like that that's what is going to be right and that's yeah. what's going to make this time meaningful yeah. not just downloading my thoughts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um because that is going to be all over the map based on how I'm kind of doing that day right. so what are what are some of the aspects that you say like the categories of that go into like worship or a call to worship or like why why is it for like done the way that it's done in uh what you all do in like a worship service sure um, we, we kind of like, we, we try to pay close attention to, um, the songs that we choose and the songs that we put in, into a set, um, and think of them in like themes a little bit. Um, now you can look at a worship song and there's all sorts of themes and that, that's fine. But we, we kind of break them down into like, um, the four different themes are like a call to worship. So this is something that's very like, um, it's just, it's celebratory. It's inviting us as the church to worship. Um, There's songs that are reflective. Um, They can be reflective on uh, who God is, or they can be reflective on, like, who we are um, because of who God is. Um, There's songs that are response songs, so a song that's like like a prayer or like a call to action. Um, And then the last one that we've already kind of hit on is, like, Jesus and the cross. Like, um, and so... We've kind of made as a rule of thumb for ourselves that we always want a, a Jesus and the cross song, something that explains who Jesus is and what he's done for us. We, we see um, that 
he was perfect. He, he lived this perfect life. He went to the cross. Um, and we now are offered salvation because of who Jesus is and what he's done. Um, so we, we, like, for us, it's like that's something we can never forget, um, something we can never leave out of our time together. Um, but then those others, like, a lot of, a lot of songs will, will cross over themes, uh, and that's okay, but we try to get a good variety. It's not like we have to get one of each every time. We're, we're pretty loose with it, but the one we're not loose with is we, we know that we want to be singing about Jesus, and we know that um, our church needs to be singing about Jesus. This is something that we all need to be reminded of, whether you've been following Jesus for five minutes or, or 50 years, like, we still need to be fixing our eyes on Jesus. Um, and so that's the thing that like, we want to make sure we hit on every time we meet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let me, let me ask this. Um, say, I mean, you guys lead worship as, I mean, part of like your weekly schedule of like what you guys do for your jobs. Mm-hmm. How do you um, keep from, I, I guess I have two parts to this question. How do you keep from that being like a defining piece of your relationship with God where it's like, this is, part of my relationship with God. I'm leading people to reflect on him. And, and how, do you, how do you keep that from like puffing you up or like making it about you? Because I think you guys do a great job of not making it about like, oh, it's the Kyle show. Oh, it's the Jake show. Like you guys do a great job of, it's about Christ. It's not always you on stage. It's not always um, about you. And I think that's not normally the norm with like worship ministry or worship leaders. Um, so how, how would you kind of describe how you Keep humility at the forefront of the way that you lead worship. Do you have anything? Um, <laughs> yeah, I would say, I mean, all of us know, we have a pretty big team, and we all, all kind of know that, like, none of us could really do it, like, right. alone. Like, oh, yeah. what we do and the capacity that we do it, like, we could not do it alone. And so just reminding ourselves that, like, every time we meet, like, um, every Sunday we have a group huddle, and one thing we try to always emphasize is how like we could not do it without every single person there, right. um, whether it be you know the people on stage, on the band, or the people um, in broadcast, you know, um, audio, everything. So I think just k- keeping that at the forefront of our mind um, just keeps us humble because we are all kind of leaning on each other, and like you know, if it was just us, we would be very um, stressed and you know right. it yeah just, we're like yeah. a small portion of about the 50 to 60 people that it yeah. takes yeah. like yeah. Uh, on our team like and that's awesome like yeah yeah we couldn't do it without the team so we can't take any of like the credit for ourselves because mm-hmm. there's so many people involved and there's so many people um helping with that so yeah 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 and i i just like keep the mindset of like myself and our team like we're like we're we're gonna be the the first among equals to like worship the Lord. Like, and that doesn't mean I'm the first person to worship God before the rest of the team. I just what what I mean by that is like in in a church in a corporate setting, like we want to be the prompters um, for our church to worship Jesus. Like, but we're the we're the first among equals. We're we're no better than the rest of our church just because we're up on the platform. Like, mm-hmm. um, we just, we have the role of being the ones to to prompt the church to worship together. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not, I don't think, you can't, I, I don't know, in this role, you really can't think of it as a performance, as like what, what an, an artist would do. Um, it's it's just it's a role and it's a privilege to be up on the platform mm-hmm. um, to get to you know help in prompting people to see Jesus and to worship. Yeah, and I think that goes to the second part of my question that I was going to ask, like whether it is personal or in front of people. And I I like what you said about like it's not about like a performance; it's about a prompting. Um, and I think that goes into answering this question. But like when you're not feeling it either personally or corporately. And you're just like, maybe you're having a slump. Maybe you're not in a great space mentally. Maybe you've had something hard happen. How do you stand up in front of people and then lead them to Christ in a way that's like, I don't know. I think about how hard that would be to do on a consistent basis because you guys are just regular people that have emotional, mental, spiritual, relational ups and downs. How do you guys, like whenever you're not like maybe feeling it the most, 
stand up and do it in a way that's not fake. You're not doing it in a way that's that's not sincere, uh, but in a way that honors God and still does a great job of leading people to the throne. I I've, I feel like I've experienced this, you know, a handful of times, and they're all really memorable because I feel like anytime I've felt that way, like going into a worship set, it always ends up being the most like amazing like mm-hmm. set and like you you know I've encountered the Lord so much in those in those sets when I'm feeling so down because I'm re- singing these songs and I'm reminding myself uh, the truth of God and um, but also going into those sets I think I just I've tried to be as vulnerable as I can you know um, a lot of the times we meet before we we um, serve and sing so I'll tell at least someone that you know I'm not feeling the best you know can you pray for me before I, I sing? And so I think just being honest, um, but just going into it um, the best you can and just honestly just turning that that time of leading worship just into a prayer for yourself and just mm-hmm. trying to get out of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And while we're like the ones on the stage, like there's been so many times where I haven't been feeling it and I look out and see everyone in the congregation mm. truly worshiping, like, it's a heart chain for me to like see them. It's like, man, I don't know. It's really inspiring to see everybody out there. And then it reflects both ways. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're all mm-hmm. kind of leading with each other, whether we're on stage or not, kind of. Yeah. So. And I think that's why your personal time of worship is so important. Um, because I feel like in, in your personal time of worship is when you can like, you can like lament to the Lord, like, and you, you can, like, spew all your thoughts to the Lord, like, um, you, you can tell him how you're feeling, um, and, and he'll help you through that, but, like, you've got to have this filling up of personal time so that you, you can, like, overflow into the corporate time, and not that, not that every time in, in corporate worship, like you're always filled up and just ready to pour out into other people. <laughs> but I think like remembering, I mean, for me on, on those times where it's, where it has been hard, like just remembering who God is and mm-hmm. what, what he's done for me, what he's brought me through. Um, and just spending time beforehand mm-hmm. being grateful and, and remembering I don't know, just being thankful for, for the life that he's given me and, and the salvation that he's given me for the forgiveness and the unconditional love, like, and just, just remembering, and then that helps to be able to, to lead in those moments. Yeah. And really paying attention to the lyrics we're singing, like, right, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard to, like, stay in, like, a rut when you're singing all of this truth yeah, and, yeah. um, but yeah, there's been a lot of times where we've done like a team meeting before and we've like read through the lyrics or something of the songs and it's like, man, we're like singing this and if we really mean it, like we're going to be worshiping. Like, right, there's yeah. no way that I'm going to like stay in this funk. Yeah. yeah, when you, I think when you truly see who God is, it's hard to not worship. Yeah. 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 Cause I, I mean, that goes back to what you said at the beginning that it's like a response and reflection of who God is back. So right. the goal for worship is not like, the most beautiful. It's not the best every time. Do we have that goal because we want to do everything we do with excellence? Yes. But when the goal is a response to God, everybody can do that, regardless of their talent level, regardless of whether they're doing it by themselves in their living room, or they're doing it, you know, in their car alone, or they're doing it in front of people. We can all respond to God in a way that honors Him and, you know, it says make a joyful noise of the Lord. It doesn't say make a beautiful noise of the Lord. It says make a joyful noise right. of the Lord. And we can all do that regardless of what our voice sounds like or if I'm tone deaf or not. Right. So, man, I want to thank you guys for being on the podcast. I hope this has been encouraging and challenging to you. And uh, hopefully you check us out next time. Thanks.